You can't have the baby. Oh my gosh. And just because we believe in God and we have faith in God and know that he's in charge doesn't mean that all of it's going to be easy. I want answers. <laughs> <laughs> he gives us little miracles just to let us know that he's there. We'll take that piece. In the process, I thought, God, what are you doing to me? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's cold, bro. I love you, Mom, Dad. Here we go! Today is Thursday Throwback. Throwback Thursday? Oh, today is Throwback Thursday. <laughs> Sorry. What's up, Sunshine Nation? This is Throwback Thursday, and today we're going to talk a little bit more about adoption from the parent side. Yes, sir. So every Thursday, we're going to be doing Throwback Thursday, where we'll tell stories. Some of them will be about more serious topics like this. Some of them will be more funny topics we got and funny, funny things that happen. Believe me, there's going to be some crazy stories. But basically, it's the time for us to share stories, things that happened in the past. And so make sure you guys check us out every Throwback Thursday. So check this out, Sunshine Nation. We still have not been given back our comments. So we're in the process of trying to do something on our website where we embed our videos in the website and then have comments on our website that you can leave. So we are in the process of getting it done and we'll keep you updated on it. Yes, but for now we'll also be posting this video on Facebook and you can totally leave the comments there. So go to Facebook, Sunshine Mafia. A will be posting it on there shortly after we post it um, on YouTube and you can leave all the comments there. Like our page on Facebook and like this video. And subscribe to our channel and click the bell for notifications if you haven't already. We love you guys. So last week we talked with Brayden and Luke and Jaden and some of their awesome story about adoption and you know depression, anxiety, addiction, some of those things that um, they struggled through, right? And how they coped and their success. We wanted to tell the story about Jaden and how he became ours. You guys heard it from uh, the kids' perspective, we thought it would be kind of cool to hear it from our perspective and the stories behind that. So any adoption is filled with miracles. As much as our children that are biological are ours, and we went through ups and downs for them to come to us through pregnancy and emergencies. We've talked about Jackson's open heart surgery um, and emergency birth. The same is with adoption. You know, it's um, a lot of heartache, a lot of miracles. and. Jaden's story is no less. I always knew that we wanted to adopt, and um, yeah, we talked about it when we were dating. We we talked about it when we got married. We tried to go through the process early on in our marriage, and over years and years and years of trying and trying and trying, it took us a long time till we actually had the opportunity to adopt. There's so many misconceptions about adoption. They think that the people who do the adopting are like somehow these amazing just saints of people who are just looking to save the world. <laughs> and that's just not the case at all. Um, I know at least with us, we didn't look at it as if we were like trying to help someone mm -hmm. by adopting. We just knew that in order for our family to be complete, that we would be adopting. And right. so, um, you know, we feel like we've been blessed so much to have Jaden in our home and to have him be our child. That's a huge blessing to us. It was just our way of finding our child. It wasn't a way of saving a child. It was a way of us finding our child. Yeah, and we feel like the same way with all of our other kids, whether they're biological or not. When I was 15, I had written my journal that I thought I would be adopting a child. I actually got pregnant on our honeymoon, so that happened real fast. We were married only like a month, and I was like, honey, I'm pregnant. We were planning on waiting two years. Definitely not ready for that. He did not swing me around in a circle, yay, hooray! It was like, oh, wow. What are we gonna do now? It was like after a couple months, you know, you know, what you find out like a month later. Now? So yeah. we've been married for about a month when we found out. That was quite the surprise. <laughs> but that was Jackson, right? That was Jackson who was born. We did foster care for several years. We had a total of eight foster children. 
and love each one of them. Oh my gosh, so precious. Some were teenagers, some were babies. Our first two were Hispanic kids. It didn't speak hardly any English, so I was doing everything in English and Spanish. The littlest one was still learning Spanish, so, so yeah, he was just He was two talk. years old, so precious. We had five failed adoptions before we got Jaden. The first one was a child that, before they even called us, I felt strongly like we were going to adopt. And they called me, I didn't even ask eight. They said, will you adopt this child? And I said, yes. And they started talking about this child's aunt. And I was like, oh my gosh, I know the aunt even. And our kids know her and, and I thought, oh my gosh, this is all just perfect. And I had this premonition beforehand and it broke my heart when things didn't work out. I remember when I started to lose hope, the adoption uh, counselor, the caseworker called me, because this was through foster care, called me and said, I just felt strong like I needed to tell you don't lose hope. So in my mind, I thought, oh, you know, finally when I started to let go of this hope of this one child, I came my hope again and then they crushed it again and said it's not gonna happen. So my emotions were going up and down. This second child, I remember I was folding clothes and out of the blue, I just broke down sobbing. It was the strangest thing. And I just turned to Abe and I was just crying, crying. I said, Abe, there was a child that was supposed to come to us tonight and they he didn't come. I just feel it. And I just felt it, no one told me that. But the very next day, the caseworkers called us and said, there's a child that went to a different family and for some reason it's not working out, well, will you take him? I felt him. Yes, I felt we were supposed to take him. And we went and picked him up. It turned out over time, we went back to his mom um, for about a month. And she came to us and said, I can't do it. Will you keep my child forever? And I said, immediately, of course. The moment she said he was ours, then my heart just switched. I was like, he's ours. Yeah, she came, gave him to us. We had him, I don't know, was that about a week or two? And at the end of that, we were ready to sign papers. We were at the lawyer's office and just, she just changed her mind, yeah. like that. I always wish I would have fought a little harder, um, but I was just so afraid of being hurt because at that time I was pregnant and my emotions were deep and I just lost it. I just sobbed and sobbed and cried, but um, we gave him back. And I wish I would have fought harder because he ended up in foster care. It's not an easy choice for the person who's, who may be giving their child up for adoption or for the people who are adopting. Previous to all of these points, we had filled out paperwork and um, you know we had gone through training and all types of things just to be able to do foster care. This is not a decision that we made lightly. People don't understand if, you know, it's just like if you knew that you were pregnant and then you had a miscarriage even in the first 12 weeks, that's devastating. When you're going through adoption and you feel like there's a child coming to your home and all of a sudden that child is not anymore, that's devastating as well. It's like well. a loss, the loss of a child, yeah that you, you were going to have. It's it's heartbreaking, yeah. The third was a child that we adore her. We won't give too many details. She's a part of her life now, but um, that was an emotional roller coaster. Yeah. And we still see her and we've seen her at concerts and she's adorable, but that was heartbreaking. And the mom, the birth mom knows that she has her child now and so they're happy and they're Grateful for the way that that one turned out. Abe said, there's this lady and um, this, it was a mutual friend. She said, she's pregnant. And I immediately, the spirit told me, the baby's biracial, and she's thinking about giving her baby up for adoption. And so he went and asked her, and she's like, yeah, I am. And yeah, she is. Strange, right? So I thought that was my answer, that this baby was gonna be ours. The mother had decided to give her up for adoption and change her mind back and forth, which was what we talked about. It's not an easy decision. I was in my closet, and I was praying, and I said, God, I don't know why I felt the strong impression to adopt. I don't know why it was in my heart but clearly it's not in the plans for us. I don't want to push something that's not supposed to be what we're supposed to do. And this was going to be our third failed adoption. I said, I just can't do this anymore. I give up. I won't come to you anymore about this issue. I won't try to adopt anymore. And I remember leaving my closet and less than an hour later, this same mom called and said, I would just work at my computer. And I thought, I do want you to adopt my baby. I just called to say, will you still adopt my baby? This is after I just said, I let go and I'm done. And so immediately I was like, yes, yes, we will. But then she changed her mind again and decided to keep her baby. So I thought, okay, God, why am I going through this? And there are the miracles that are too sacred to share here now. But um, I struggled, you guys, big time because I thought I understood God's ways. I thought I understood the miracles that I was receiving and it kept falling through. And later we're gonna explain this. So keep watching this story because I'm later I'm gonna explain why those experiences happened that I received. So the fourth one, we were living in Michigan and we got an adoption agency this time. But we were open to any child, any gender, any race, any disability. They have you fill out a piece of paper and it asks you 
are you willing to take a child with this? And it will give you all of these different ailments, um, different diseases, uh, different problems that they may have had, whether the birth mother may, may have been on drugs or not, have been drinking during the pregnancy or not. And so all of these things we filled out whether or not we'd be willing to accept the baby like that. Family and history it, problem. Yeah, it's pretty interesting because as you start to do that, you start to think, if I had a child that was coming biologically to me, would I be able to sit here and say, well, I don't want a child if it's that, I don't want a child if it's this, I don't want my child to have that. And so as we started thinking about that, we're like, well, we would take who God because sends we us. would take who God sends us. And so we felt like we needed to be as open as we could with accepting children from any type of background, any type of issues, because we felt like that would be a child that God would be sending us. And so we did that. And we got a call um, the night before and said, you go to Washington, there's a child who's been born and they've chosen your family and um, he has spina bifida. So I looked up spina bifida, it meant that he could be in a wheelchair, he could have a hole in his, I think what it is is there's a hole or gap in the spine that's mm -hmm. not fully developed. We got all packed, we stayed up all night ready to go and they called us that morning and said, oh, they decided to choose a different family. I was like, oh my gosh, over yeah. and over again. So this is the fourth one. And the fifth one is the hardest. When we went to the adoption agency, they told us there's a website that you can put your profile on, your whole family pictures and all this kind of stuff. And so we got ourselves all dialed up and dressed up and <laughs> gussied up and took some pictures of the family and we put them on this profile and created a profile, wrote all the information about us, bios, etc and put it on this website, and we actually got a call from the website. Immediately, from, with like a few days, I think it was. Yep, from a girl, and she was young, had a, she was super young, like a mid-teenager. She already had a baby who was eight months old and was pregnant again. And so, um, we got called. We actually went and visited with her and her mom, and- We're still friends with her. Yep, and we met um, her. We had contact with her every day on, uh, texting her, calling her, we were, I mean, we really connected well with her, we loved her. The visit was absolutely amazing. All the kids were highly involved. We had a name for the baby. We yeah. prayed for this child every day, and this lasted how many months? Like six months. Everything seemed great. We were just waiting for the baby to be born. Because her first child that she had kept was, um, the kid arrived a couple months early, we knew there was a possibility that we would have to leave a couple months earlier than planned than when her due date was. And we had a lot going on with the other kids, but we were more than willing to leave the state we were leaving, living in and go to her state and just stay there and just cancel everything. We were so willing to drop everything. But I had a prayer with God and I said, we will drop everything for this child. But if it's possible, I asked for three things. Jackson's in a play and he's been working so hard in his first play he's ever been in. We'll leave him here in Michigan and we'll go and we, it's totally fine. But if we could, if the baby could stay in her tummy a little longer, that'd be great. If, um, so that we could all go as a family. Then I said, and then the second thing is, I'm Jordan's basketball coach. It's his first year playing basketball and I can totally lead the basketball team and someone else can step in. It's totally fine. He was like five years old. It was fine. And then the third thing was, was that the kids were in a band uh, concert and they only had one concert the entire year. And I asked God, again I told him, I am willing to drop everything, the band concert, the basketball, the play, everything. But if it's possible, because maybe stay in our tummy a little longer so we can also go to this band concert. So that, I had that prayer. So just remember that prayer, we'll come back to it. <laughs> right, so a couple months before the baby was supposed to be born, we like stopped getting, having communication with this girl, she wasn't texting back. Something felt wrong. Right, so Rachel's like, oh no, something happened. And I was like, why? What do you mean? You know, it's like, it's only been a couple days. I think that was a Friday night and I just started crying all day, Saturday, Sunday. I just felt it. I just felt it so strongly. Even though it was a couple months early, somebody knocked at the door and it was our bishop. Our pastor came to our house. He lived 30 minutes away. He didn't have a planned meeting. He just felt like he wanted to come. And I said, just a second, bishop. I just got a phone call. So I answered the phone. I went in the laundry room and it was our caseworker and she said, she had her baby and she decided to keep him. You can't have the baby. Oh my gosh. That was like so devastating. I dropped to the ground. I just wailed. I couldn't even stand. I remember I, I've never collapsed from pain, from a heartache. I've never collapsed or I physically couldn't stand. 
But I remember as I fell to the ground just sobbing, I looked up and there was my husband and our spiritual leader, our bishop, standing there ready to comfort. And so that action there let me know that God was 100% in charge. He was there. He was aware. He had sent one of his servants to be there to comfort us. And that was what gave us peace. But Jackson, tell me about Jackson. He took it so hard. He was the oldest child at the time. Jackson was so devastated by it. He cried and cried and cried. He went from anger to sadness to I had never seen him so again. angry, yeah. And just, you know, he was going through a lot. and He was shaking. It was, he yeah. had to sleep with us all through the night. And he was like 11, but he had to sleep with us. Yeah, he was pretty, he was pretty uh, effective. There are things that we go through and challenges that we go through that we just cannot explain why. And just because we believe in God and we have faith in God and know that he's in charge doesn't mean that all of it's going to be easy. Because we believed in God, we have faith in God, and yet these challenges that we were having were taking us to the very brink of that faith. Oh, to the very man. edge of that. Crush me. Uh, it was a big test for us just to be able to say, okay, God, what is your purpose in all what of this? What is your purpose? So. so I remember I went um, back to that closet. I was sad and I was mad. That's where I go for my prayers, for my deepest prayers is in my closet. And I said, I'm speaking to you. I was willing to stop pushing in this direction. You kept bringing these children to me. And it keeps, I just keep being left with heartache time after time after time and I said I need to know why this is happening why you told me to adopt just to feel heartache why or I'm not leaving this closet because I was mad <laughs> but tell me why I was now. mad and I remember as I sat there just angry just feeling this anger inside of me demanding answers this peace literally I felt peace just push over me just push over my entire body just calming me and I remember just looking around going Whoa, wait, I kind of was feeling validated by my anger. <laughs> Stop. And I like stormed out of their closet. And I was like, I don't want peace. I want answers. After a few more minutes, I was like, actually, I need some peace. <laughs> Please give we'll me this peace again. We'll take that peace. Yeah. We moved to a new house. I got everything ready. I felt this It was shortly after we moved. I remember her saying like, I don't even know why we're doing this. I don't even know why these people are coming. Because they were going to come to it, um, inspect oh, the new house. Study. Yeah, the house that we were in. They were inspecting it just to make sure you know, that everything was right. Rachel's like, I don't even know why we're going through this, because we're not gonna be able to adopt anybody. But she came, and she was like, oh, just keep believing, just keep believing. She knew. When she came, <laughs> she knew, but she couldn't tell us anything. She knew something that she couldn't tell us. She's like, just keep believing, don't worry. Like, and, grumbling uh, everybody. I was like, yeah, that's the spirit, you know. He's forever that, positive. Have that optimistic out outlook on life. So here we were sitting at the band concert, getting ready for it to start, and I got a phone call. And I just started wailing, sobbing, and crying, and I'm like going, what's going on? I'm like, you okay? Like, what happened? I'm like, and people around me thought somebody died. Was I was like, <laughs> <laughs> they said, we have like, your baby. What? We have your baby. I was like, ready to leave the band concert before it even started. I'm coming right now. I was like, we're going. And they said, no, you can't come tonight. Come tomorrow morning. And I thought, oh my gosh. This was after the play, after the basketball season. And it was even the day, it would be the day after the band concert. Remember that prayer I said, can you please make it after? And not that it needed to happen this way, but let me tell you something about God, a little bit that I know because there's so much we don't know, right? He gives us little miracles just to let us know that he's there and that he's the one communicating with us. To let us know that came from him. So that was just a special little gift for me from him. We went and we met Jaden. We absolutely fell in love with Jaden. Oh my gosh. And I even got to nurse him. That well, was awesome. Yeah, that's great. I <laughs> that, that has happened. Yeah, I didn't get to, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> that. <laughs> Stop. Jaden was born on the exact day that I was in my closet begging and demanding for answers, but God just gave me peace. Now I want you to think about your life how many things are you asking for and pleading for and God gives you peace because he can't tell you all the answers yet, right? Accept that peace because my baby boy was being born. That moment I was in the closet, that very day, God couldn't tell me, hey, your baby's being born. <laughs> just be peaceful. But he just wanted me to trust the peace he was giving.
feel like God is giving you a message of something that he wants you to do, whether it be adopt or whether it be some other message, you know, even though the things aren't working out as quickly, as easily as you expect, you know, many times that's just a, a journey. It's just part of the journey that he wants you to be on to get there. If they would have told us from the beginning, you know, in the end, this is what's going to happen, uh, then we still would have gone through it. And now, 100%. looking back, man, how worth it was it for us to go through those things? Uh, good things and bad things, knowing that we've been able to uh, have Jaden with us now. But why do we have to go through these failed adoptions? Why do I have to go through that pain? We don't understand otherwise. But I know one thing is that every time I proclaimed that I wasn't going to try to adopt anymore, God sent another child in our lives to keep me excited and on the line, kept me hanging on the line. Does that make sense? He kept me on the line of looking towards adoption until we got Jaden. And okay, I'm thinking, okay, well that was a painful way to keep me on the line, but like he said, was it worth it to get our Jaden? Absolutely, it was worth it. In the process, I thought, God, what are you doing to me? It was his way of, of trusting him, of valuing the miracle that he gives us, but also of keeping my mind and my heart on adoption when I was ready to give up. The day after we signed papers with Jaden. Yeah, the day after we started getting all sorts of messages and phone calls from other people who were looking at our profile on that page and wanted us to adopt their Two child. Two people specifically called us yep. and said, Will you adopt your child? And I actually had to call the caseworker going, did we adopt two children? And I was really confused because I thought, why would I receive all these phone calls? After we signed the papers for Jane's adoption and this strong impression came to me, there are many children who need a good home, that Jaden is your child. So I felt like he wanted me to know that through all the, the failed adoptions and all the things that, that went a certain way, that this was the way it was supposed to happen. And the adoption committee said that the moment he came into their care, they're, the whole committee was like, because they have to choose which family they should go to. They were like, oh, he goes to the mills. And then later they're like, oh, we need to pray about it and make sure. <laughs> but he was just such a perfect fit from the family he came from, from everything about him, from the request that the family had. They wanted him to go to a big family. Hey, Jaden. How you doing? JJ. What are you guys talking about? <laughs> <laughs> you know what we're talking about. Oh my gosh, we didn't tell the most important, not the most important part, but an important part. We couldn't afford to adopt you. Do you know what we did? What? Because it cost a lot of money to pay for all the fees and everything. That's right, I forgot. We ran a family marathon. Yeah, I ran. You ran your no, age. No, you weren't born yet, silly. You didn't Except for Rachel ran less than her age at the time, so. Is that okay? That you ran less than your age? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely ran less than my age. But I think I ran my age in feet. <laughs> but Did you come up with the idea? After yes. Well, it's because I get inspiration in the middle of the night. In my closet in the middle of the night. It just came to me. Run a marathon with the family, and everyone run a leg their age. And I added it up. And it was 26.2 miles. Perfect. Jackson was nine, he ran nine miles. He was Tyson nine and a half. He, he ran nine and a half miles. He ran nine and a half miles. Tyson was seven and a half, he ran seven and a half miles. Jordan was five, five and, a half. and a half, ran that. Mariah was three and a half, ran that. And Juliana, point Juliana two miles. did point two miles with Juliana. And I she ran. Was one, she was almost two years old. With her for that point two miles, so props to me. So it all Rachel ran the sick. whole thing with all the kids, so she, I, I was driving around and taking the kids to drop points and then she would take one kid's hand and start running and I would take the other kid and it was a lot of fun. Mariah was the last runner beside Juliana who was with a... Mariah was a beast, I couldn't believe she She was that. running so far at just age three. She ran the whole time and I remember she was running, running, running. She looked down at my legs because I've run like 23 miles at this point when she started and she goes, Mom, I can see that my legs are moving faster than yours. <laughs> I like, yes, they are. But do you know what, Jaden? I like to move faster than anybody. I know, you were still in heaven when we did this. News stations, they were all there at the finish line ready to talk about this big event because we're raising money and people would donate for our miles. We started a page on Facebook, um, did a fundraiser, and people were donating money. And they would donate money to us for, for running this marathon. And it's crazy because what it added up to is Exactly what, exactly what it cost. No for, more, no less. We for the adoption to get Jaden. Pretty awesome. Lots yeah, and lots buddy. of people were part of that. 
So listen, people even on the news were like, wait, were you the family running for your baby? We were. The news station was at the finish line. They're all ready. They were calling me during it. Are you guys almost at the finish line? Almost. Y'all knew we were running for you. Wait. And I remember thinking, our baby's going to know how hard we worked to have him. Wait, who? You! You! Oh, you said you! You had t-shirts made and everything. Yeah, oh, wait, we had t-shirts made team by called? ourselves. I have the shirt. Yeah, we'll go get, get it. it. I was smaller then. I could fit and this. And you can barely see the writing on there. The Keepers. Mills Family Marathon, the number four, adoption, Rachel, 26.2 miles. And then every kid had one just like this, and it would show the amount of uh, that they ran. So. And this is my shirt. Do <laughs> you want this? You can have it. One of the kids named it that because they were tired of losing the babies, and they said, this one, we're keeping this baby. Yeah, so they said this the keepers. This forever. Dude, we kept her. Jaden, what do you think about that? I think I'm gonna watch the video. Give me some of this. You're gonna watch this video and find out Give the whole story? Else. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh wait, what do you think about adoption? It's cool, bro. We cool with it, right? We cool with it. Should I try nation? We cool with it, right? Yeah. Okay, we cool. We never referred to our children as um, adopted, biological, they're just our children. That's why you guys haven't heard the story or what, for the couple years that we've been on here, we want to make sure we told it properly. Definitely a miracle. Yeah, we're grateful. We're grateful to his birth mom because she knew that she loved you and she wanted you to have a better life. She wanted you to be and safe. And we are so grateful to God. That's why I go to church. That's right. I get out of bed and I say a prayer. That's why, huh? Yeah, and I make my bed. I feel good about my family. I love my brothers and sister. I love Juliana, Mariah, Luke, Brayton, Derek, Samara, Jackson, Tyson, Jordan, and Mariah. Well, Derek's gonna love that. that you just said Derek. <laughs> <laughs> Is that brotherhood? It's the brotherhood. <laughs> Spread sunshine. We love you guys. The heart of your heart. I love you, mom, dad, everybody.